here we are, we're gonna start the E2. And in order to start the E2, we have to turn on the argon. This is the pressure inside the tank of argon. The pressure inside the tank is controlled by a pressure builder here. You have to turn the pressure builder on. Lefty Lucy turns the pressure builder on. You can open it the entire way. When you can't turn it anymore, turn it back a quarter turn. That way it's on fully, but not overly stuck on. This is the on valve. It's got a use label. Again, Lefty Lucy turns that on. You want to open it up all the way and quarter turn it back. This is the wall unit. Let's verify that that's open. We can turn it closed a little bit and then make sure that it's open. Do not crank it open. Just make sure that it's open all the way. Now that we have our pressure builder on, and the use valve open to the wall. We're gonna purge the line. Purging this valve, you just lefty-loosey open it slightly, and then close it. Let's you know that the argon line has filled the entire line. We can now open the argon to the system by opening this valve here. Lefty-loosey, turning it all the way open once you feel a little resistance you know that it's entirely open. This gauge should equal this gauge. It's difficult to read because this pressure goes up so high and we're only looking at 300 PSI, but it does register the same number. This gauge is controlled by this valve. You can increase the pressure out or decrease the pressure out by turning this valve. This gauge should read 130 pounds per square inch to feed the element. This pressure inside the tank should read anywhere from 200 to 300 PSI. If it's too low, we need to build pressure inside the tank. To increase the pressure inside the tank, you turn this bolt here quarter turn clockwise and then watch the gauge pressure rise. If you need it to go higher, turn it another quarter turn and watch the gauge until the proper pressure is reached. If the pressure is too high, over 300 PSI inside the tank, you'd like to decrease the pressure a little bit. Same bolt, turn it quarter turn counterclockwise and then wait and watch the pressure decrease inside the tank. The pressure will take about five minutes before it settles into its new position. So you have to be patient. This gauge tells you how much liquid is in the tank. The little yellow strap is the level of the liquid. It doesn't work very well. Sometimes tapping it slightly to make sure that the cuff has settled properly to give you an accurate reading is required. Another method is to tip the tank. The problem is, is that when it's full, it's 700 pounds. So I do not recommend that you do full force. To tip the tank, to check for liquid argon, place your foot on the low load and push against the low load while pulling the tank. You know that if you're not tipping it with a little bit of force, you're good to go. You can tell it's quite full. Let me show you an empty one. Here we are in room 103. This is the nitrogen doer for the laser. We turn it on by this valve, turn it all the way open, and then quarter turn it closed. This tank only feeds two liters per minute, so very low pressure, very low flow. So we do not use the pressure builder in here. Note that the pressure inside the tank is 350 PSI. That is the maximum pressure that these tanks can hold. They will blow out of these um, purge valves uh, when the pressure is too high. This pressure gauge should equal the pressure gauge on the nitrogen tank. This valve opens the nitrogen to the system, counterclockwise, 
turning the valve open all the way, and then quarter turn it back. There is no purge valve in this line. The pressure out should not exceed 10 PSI. As a matter of fact, you don't want the needle far off the zero pin at all. To increase and decrease the pressure out of the line is this knob here. To increase the pressure clockwise, to decrease the pressure out counterclockwise. Again, keep this pressure very low. The system cannot handle any more than 10 pounds per square inch. Now we're gonna turn on the helium. Simply open this knob counterclockwise and then quarter turn it back. This line for the helium is controlled by this regulator. The pressure inside the helium tank reads here. The pressure out reads here. This pressure is controlled by this knob clockwise to increase, counterclockwise to decrease. And this is the line valve that opens the helium line to the system. Simply turn the knob counterclockwise to open the valve. Go all the way. Once you feel resistance, stop the line is open. The pressure for helium out should be 30 to 35 pounds per square inch. Here is the E2 chiller. We never turn this off. The temperature of the water is 15 degrees centigrade and should always be 15 degrees centigrade. When you press the button down, you can check pressure. The instrument is off right now. The pressure is 62 PSI. When the instrument is on, it's around 54 PSI. Hitting the button again, comes back to the temperature. When checking the water level, you want the water floating ball to be between minimum and maximum levels. And we've drawn a little black mark where our water level usually sits. The ball is a little low. I'll add some distilled water to make sure that ball goes up to the proper level. Now we're gonna turn on the laser. First, we begin by turning on the cabinet. You can hear it start to warm up. And then turn on the computer. Wait. And now the laser's on. Now we're going to log in to the laser computer, open up Chromium, and type in the password. When the Java updater pops up, please tell it no. You do not want to install anything or update anything. Please do not update anything on the laser computer or the mass spec computer. They should remain offline from the world. They should only live in this room. Here is the Chromium icon to open the Chromium software. You just double click on that icon. When the laser initializes, all of these fields should be green. If they're red, shut down the program and try opening it again. Now all the motors will be homing. When the blue wheel stops its rotation, the loading procedure is done. When chromium is done loading, you'll look in the lower right hand corner, it has some suggestions. It wants you to turn on the laser purge gas and it wants you to position the stage. Click on the wording. Up pops a dialog box. Make sure that the axes to home are all ticked. You want X, Y, and Z. Z being the zoom or the vertical direction. And then just press the start button. And you will see the stage find its axes. The lights will turn green when the positions have been found. The dialog box will go away. When the homing stage is done, go down to the lower right hand corner again. We're just going to close the um, suggestion to turn the laser purge gas on. In the upper left hand corner of the screen, we have two tabs the gas controls tab and the view control tab. The view control tab controls the lighting on the stage. We have quick sets preset. Just by clicking on quick set lighting one, changes the coax level to a level of 17, leaving the ring and transmitted lights off, which is fine. The video display 
and the camera exposure will all be set to the quick set control. Now we'll go to the gas controls tab. We've loaded samples, so now we need to purge the chamber from air. We'll take mass flow controller one, which is the flow, helium flow into the cell, and we'll change that to 0.3 liters per minute and hit enter. And you'll see the read back come up to 0.3 liters per minute. Mass flow controller two, which is the helium flow into the arm of the laser chamber and type in 0.3 as well, liters per minute, hit enter. And again, the read back will display the set point. If you do not have flow, you've forgotten to turn on the helium tank, please reset this to zero, go and turn the helium on, and then begin your purge. Here are the video laser focus. This is the Z direction. The current step size for the Z direction changing step size is 10 microns. You can change the step size by clicking the arrow up, arrow down buttons in here, but 10 microns is fine to look for your focus. To manually focus, you can click the Z up, increase the distance between the camera and the surface, or clicking down will get closer to your subject. There is also a coarse and fine auto focusing. If you click the coarse focus, you'll see it's doing a coarse search and then it will do a fine search and it will tell you when it's done. You can also just click the fine search and it will do a fine search and then done. Now that we're purging, we can go ahead and turn the element on. Now before we turn the mass spec on, we're gonna reset the front end computer. We do that by taking a pen or pen cap and placing it into that hole to reset the front end. You'll hear a beep and that's your sim signal to remove the pen cap, and then you'll see the monitor let you know that the front end is booted up. Here we are in front of the mass spec. First, we're gonna look at the torch and the cones. We do that by unlocking the front of the instrument. Right now it's locked, and just quarter turn that to unlock the front. That releases the argon pressure. Argon pressure actually keeps that thing cinched in to the instrument. Then get your fingers in between the base here and open up the front end. Here we are in front of the cone. This is the sample cone. The skimmer cone sits behind the sample cone. But we're just looking here to make sure that the cone is in place. The ring around it is snug and looks good. This is the way it should look. You'll notice rings of oxidation and remnants of burning uh, along the outside of the cone. That's normal. Here we are in front of the torch. The thing we're going to look for here is that the inner circle of the torch and the outer circle of the torch bonnet are flush. You don't want the bonnet out too far or in too deep. You want it perfectly flush. You do that by running your finger around to make sure that they're, they're both on the same plane. Now that we've checked the cones and the torch, we're gonna close the front end. And lock the door. Here's the makeup argon line and the sample inlet line. This is the mixing bowl, which is attached to the back of the torch. Make sure that the mixing bowl is straight in to the torch and not at an angle. First thing we need to do is turn on the mass spec computer. Now we'll log in to the mass spec computer. We go to Tucson, go to the Tucson icon, click on that one, type in the password, hit go. Once the computer is logged on, if you ever see an update, please do not update this computer. So I'm going to open the thermo element folder. Now that we're in the computer, we're gonna open up the network processor that begins communications with the mass spec. When the network processor opens, it will also open the executive. You'll also hear the mass spec make a few small 
noises to let you know that this computer is now in communications with the mass spec. Now we're going to open up the instrument window. It'll open up small. Go ahead and make that large so you can see what you're doing. Here we have some gauges. High voltage is off right now, which is why it's red. So is the peristaltic pump. It's red. The argon middle is around 3.3. Argon maximum is 6 bar. That is the maximum pressure that we need to start and run the mass spec. The high vacuum is 6 times 10 to the negative 8. That's correct when the instrument is off. The 4 vac is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 4. That is the maximum or minimum rather vacuum that it can read. The when the instrument is off, that registers that number. We are not flowing sample gas, it's relatively zero. We are not flowing auxiliary gas, and there is some cool gas flow at 0.5 liters a minute. Right now, all of the flows show red, meaning off. The on button is highlighted, and that, honestly, is the only thing that you have to do to turn the instrument on. By clicking the on button, dialog box comes open and says, please verify the tubing connection. Make sure that the instrument is ready to go um, piping wise. Click OK. Now there's another dialog box for the peristaltic pump. If we were going to use um, solutions work, we would say yes, but we are going to laser, so we'll say no. Now you can see the instrument water flow to the RF coil is flowing, and water flow to the skimmer valve is flowing. Sample gas, auxiliary gas, and makeup argon are coming up to levels. The skimmer valve remains closed until after the torch is lit, and the jet interface pump also is off and remains off until the final uh, start up. Coming down here, we can see that coolant gas has con to 16.3 liters a minute. Auxiliary gas is flowing at 0.7 liters a minute, and sample gas is flowing at a liter a minute. All of our lights are green here. We've turned the cooling system on, the high vac system, the magnetic field regulator, and the temperature field regulator are all on, and HV remains off. It doesn't matter if HV is on or off unless you vent the instrument, then you want to make sure the HV is off until there's adequate pressure inside the instrument. Now I'm going to go and stand next to the RF button on the instrument itself and wait for the torch to light. When the instrument is on, the skimmer valve is open, all of these lights are green. I'm standing here at the front end of the mass spec, this is where we reset the front end computer, and this is the RF generator on-off button. When lighting the instrument, make sure that you stand by that button. And if the instrument doesn't light after 20 seconds of the Tesla coil sparking, hit that button and restart the sequence. Never turn this key to the off position unless you're venting the instrument. This key controls the turbo pumps. These two readouts are for the reflected power. No, these two readouts are for the RF generator. The top one is the forward power, and the bottom one is the reflected power. You always want the reflected power readout to be less than 10. The forward power, when the HV off, is around 1200. Now that the instrument was started, the readout says the plasma was successfully started. The skimmer valve is open. The torch has a little blue flame. And then we'll go back down to the configuration window here. The <clears throat> coolant gas is flowing at 16.3 liters a minute. The mass spec needs 16 liters a minute uh, to the instrument to flow. That's argon, by the way. The auxiliary argon gas is 0.7 liters a minute. Sample gas flow is at 0.6 liters a minute. The 4 vac is now 1 times 10 to the negative 3 
millibar, and the high vacuum is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 7. The argon max is 5.76 bar, it's plenty of pressure for the instrument. The argon middle is at 3.3, that hasn't changed. And then high voltage right now is off, and we're going to turn the high voltage on to warm up the instrument so by going over here to this button and clicking HV. When HV is on, you'll see it turns green. The high voltage reads negative 8,000 volts. If we go up to the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that the instrument says that it is ready. Now we're going to open up the tune file and warm the magnet. We do that by going down here to the Run Tune button. Click that open up here and make this window big so we can see. Here are the lenses, all of our status for the systems, all green. And now we're going to open up, going to File Open to open up a tune parameter. Click that open. Now we'll open up the most recent tune file with the H skimmer cone and jet sample cone. We'll click open. This loads the parameters into the system. We're now going to create a scan list by clicking on the yellow icon above. This opens up a scan list. We have scan lists already created. We'll just go to the load button sort by name, and I'm going to scroll down to the uranium lead tune low resolution scan list and click open. What we're going to scan is lead 206 and, uh, and then scan up to uranium 238, click o OK. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to begin the scan or start the scan by clicking the green play button. The instrument makes a little whiny noise. Shazam! Things are happening. Scanning is happening and there is no signal going into the mass spec. So these values are simply backgrounds in analog mode. Analog because they're red. What I'm going to do is come up to the lenses. I'm going to right click on this image of the lenses, which opens up the lenses dialog box. I'm going to take the extraction voltage from negative 2000, which is its maximum setting, and drag that down to zero. This removes ions from the flight tube so we don't wear out our collector. This takes about an hour, half an hour to an hour to warm up the instrument. Let it sit just like this um, and let the magnet exercise its legs. This uh, window is looking at mass 206. The window is 150% of the mass. And the y-axis is intensity in counts per second. The analog signal the analog signal reads red. This window shows mass uranium, 238, at 150% window. Again, intensity on the y-axis. We don't have anything going into the collector, so this is just background noise. The screens below are just the integration of the curve above. So this one is for the mass 206. And this window corresponds to the uranium-238 mass. And the final window on the lower right-hand side, it tells you right here what it is. It's window B over window A. And B is the uranium-238 mass, and A is the 206 mass. So when we have signal, this will tell you the ratio of 238 to 206. And that sums up starting the element.